In my last video, we talked about the fact that my CRF 450L was an adventure bike. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what exactly makes my CRF 450L an adventure bike. No arguing. And since everyone's asked, we're gonna talk about specifically my nav tower and what all went into building it. Honda already built the CRF 450L as a road legal dual sport bike, so we can check all those boxes right off the bat. LED headlights, LED turn signals, license plate, and a subframe you could park a truck on. Or my fat ass. In stock form, the 450L is an awesome dual sport bike. As an adventure bike, it's missing a couple things. It's gonna need a fat seat, it's gonna need a bigger tank, and it's gonna need a luggage. And uh, I also recommend getting some sort of a rack system on the back to hang that luggage off of. After that, pick the kind of tires for the terrain you're gonna ride on and just go for it. For my build, I went with the Seat Concepts Comfort XL. Um, this has 6,000 miles in it and is in perfect condition. It's grippy on top. Uh, the center is really narrow. So when you're standing up on the pegs, it's actually a motocross seat. And the only real complaint I and others have had is that the fitment around the edge is a little wonky. Uh, the next mod I went with the IMS three gallon tank. Right now, it and a 20 liter Nomad tank are the only two aftermarket tanks I'm aware of. Uh, the IMS goes on really well, it looks great, and for me it's worked perfectly. The luggage rack I went with is the Skaggs rack, and the thing I love, love, love about this rack is that it's mounted through your fender, straight into the subframe. It doesn't wrap around under a lot of, a lot of racks attached at your seat point, so if you need to pull your seat to get at your air box or your battery or anything, you have to actually take part of your rack uh, system off. Right now on the bike I have the Moto Z Tractionator Rallzies, R-A-L-L-Z. Um, these tires have been fantastic as adventure tires. They work really well on the road. They're definitely knobby enough to get you through most dirt. Uh, when it gets a little loose the, the blocks tend to be a little large, but these tires have 3,500 miles on them and are just now ready for replacement. The stock tires that come on the bike, the IRCs, they work just fine. Uh, they're way more road oriented than off-road oriented. So if you get into loose stuff, uh, you might be wanting for a better tire and forget about mud. You might as well be running slicks. I run an ultra heavy duty tube in the front tire just because with all the extra weight on the bike, if you try to air these down to 12 PSI or so, um, you're risking a pinch flat. 6,000 miles and no flats. Knock on wood. <laughs> the rest of the mods I'm going to talk about are definitely not necessary. My first really long adventure ride was 140 miles on the highway to get to Montrose, uh, Colorado. And from there I did 160, 170 miles of dirt roads to get to Moab, Utah. Um, turned around and did it all again, coming back the other way. Uh, and that was all with just the first four mods I talked about. The only thing that I was left wanting at all was again, the tires whenever it got sandy, uh, they were a little so-so, but the bike itself and everything I had with me worked perfectly. So again, if you're on a budget, if you just make those four changes, this bike will do anything you ask it to do. In no particular order, here are the other doodads I've added to my bike since that first trip. Two mods that I recommend for every 450L CRF. The first one you can't see, but there's a Vortex ECU in here. The Vortex ECU fixes everything that's wrong with this bike. It should just come stock with that. They should just get rid of the ECU, put in a Vortex and sell them that way. Of course, they're not gonna do that. Uh, the other mod, 
is an exhaust. You don't need a full system, but at least get the pipe and get rid of your catalytic converter. So do those two mods, the ECU and the pipe, you'll get most of the horsepower back that Honda took away when they tamed the 450R motor. Plus you'll also get rid of like 10 pounds of weight that sits way up high and way out back. Uh, kind of a game changer for this bike. Every shootout I've seen, that was always the complaint with the 450L versus everybody else, KTM, Beta, etc. Down on horsepower and fat. Those two things, up on horsepower, lose 10 pounds. A Scott steering damper that smooths out the high speed wobbles and the low speed wobbles as well. It actually works really, really well and it's adjustable on the fly, right? You can go from soft to stiff. I went with the sub mount, which means that it comes with these risers so that it'll fit underneath the bar. I added a different bar. This is the uh, Pro Taper Evo wind embed. Uh, I, just, I just like it that it pushes a little further for forward. We added these double take adventure mirrors, which are on Ram ball mounts. Um, again, if they get smashed, right, they go back in easy. And the other thing that's nice about them is you can, without any tools, you can take them off and put them in your bag if you, if you want to up your aerodynamics game. Out front for illuminations, I have the Baja Designs headlight kit. Um, I did a video on that. This thing is ridiculously bright. I love these headlights, uh, especially when you're out in the middle of nowhere on a gravel road uh, and the elk are crossing everywhere. Must have. I've got a couple Zeta bits. I've got their hand guards. These things are, are amazing. They're absolutely bomb proof. I've dropped this bike so many times and um, after breaking the Cherubis ones that I had before, I put these on, no regrets. Um, I got Zeta controls. Uh, what else? Here's their front chain sprocket guard, their heel guard, their chain guide. I'm sure I have some other stuff. Um, if you're wondering uh, the quality on, on certain parts with Zeta, just get it. I mean, everything they make is just amazing. Uh, while we're down here, I've got the Chair B's uh, frame guards. Those are off of a, or I'm sorry, those are built for a 450R, RX, X, I forget which ones they are. Anyways, you have to cut them out to make them fit. The pivot pegs, I still have these things. I'm still not 100% sure if I like them yet. Steg pegs. Uh, for leaning back on the bike. These things are awesome. I don't know why these aren't on every bike. That should just be like standard equipment on a motorcycle, a hump here to rest your calf against. Uh, these things are amazing, love them. For the drivetrain, I have a Renthal front sprocket um, and the DID 520 EVRT chain, uh, which is really nice. Uh, way better than a stock one. If you, I got, 3,000 miles out of my stock chain. Uh, it was probably actually done at about 2,000 miles. So plan on changing that soon. Out back, I've got a Super Sprox rear sprocket and I went with the 52 tooth. I actually added a tooth in the back. Most of the aftermarket tires you're gonna put on this thing are gonna be bigger and it's gonna drop your torque down a little bit. Um, so I wanted more torque for low speed. I wanted more torque because a lot of times Again, I, I have 50 pounds of luggage sitting on this thing. So for me, it just makes sense. I, I don't need to do 110 miles an hour. What I need to do is be able to pull out from a stoplight pretty quick with the bike totally loaded down. And adding a tooth or even two on the back goes a long way towards that. I installed the Recluse Radius CX clutch. Um, this thing in tight, technical, low-speed stuff is absolutely worth its weight in gold, uh, especially for a heavy bike that is not known for having the greatest, that is not known for having the greatest clutch pack in the first place. This thing is a lifesaver. Um, I also use the AXP Racing Skid Plate, uh, something that's kind of cool about this. Can you see it? It's got a cutout here where your oil plug is. So you do not have to remove your skid plate every time you change your oil. And if you know anything about the uh, 450L, you have to change your oil a lot. 
Um, I did the San Diego powerhouse thermostat delete. Um, I've run in Moab. I've run out here in Colorado in zero degree weather. The engine runs perfectly fine all the time. And plus the kit gives you all the little bits and pieces you need to take your uh, emissions stuff off. All right, and now let's talk about my nav tower. What, what everybody's actually waiting for me to talk about. Um, basically what you have is on the back side of this is the adventure spec nav tower, which connects into your top triple clamp up here. Right, and goes up here. It's this big aluminum piece that everything's hanging off of. Um, that comes with, when you buy those, that comes with a big piece of plastic that, that sits up here. It's kind of this Batman shape. I didn't, I didn't like it. Um, I, I wanted a clear windshield, even though you're not going to look at it. I thought it looked better. I didn't like the Batman thing. So this is a Baja Works KTM bolt-on windscreen. Basically, I don't know if you can see it, there's four holes here. So if you put this on a KTM, those four holes just drill right into their number plate, and that's how you attach it. I have mine attached with a speed metal windscreen screw kit. Here, let me see if I can, maybe you can't see through it. Basically, there are little rubber standoffs. Um, I actually have these mounted incorrectly. And I'll tell you why here in a second, but you can see them, right? The rubber, can you see it's moving? Has a little bit of a button head on the back side, and then a screw on the front, and then built in inside is a brass uh, nut. Let's see if you can see this one better. All right? So there's a screw on the outside that holds the windscreen on, and then there's a little bit of a button head on the back. It's just rubber that goes through like a, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch hole. Don't ask me the size, I forget. But that holds it on. And the thing is, is if you pull on that really hard, I don't know, can you see it move? Right, if you pull on that hard enough, this thing will actually come off and hopefully not break. <laughs> I've got a feeling it's gonna break anyways, but it might not break. So that's how this is attached. Um, this little piece here I made, this is just a piece of Kydex. Um, I wanted to bend it so it matched this curve a little bit better. Uh, you, I don't think you'd need to do that. I'll bet you could just use these screw holes and go straight into it. Um, but I had already made it, so I added that to it. That is basically what the nav tower on this bike is. I mean, it's super not fancy whatsoever. So there's, there's the secret. The secret is now out. That's how I made it. That's what all these parts are. Um, and then mounted on that, you can see I have, this is my Tusk grip heaters. I have a Ram ball mount that on the end I have a seven inch Samsung uh, tablet. You, you can put whatever size you want. The seven inch just happens to like hide behind the windscreen just fine. Um, before I use this for navigation, and again, you can put a real GPS on there if you want for $700, or you can buy a $120 seven inch tablet that when it gets smashed, ain't no big thing. Um, before I had this, I used my Pixel 3 phone, and that worked great for about half a year, but it being out in the wind all the time, eventually something happened to the camera lens and it killed my phone. Um, so I don't do that anymore. I still have an extra mount down here that I can put my phone if I want to, but I'm not going to navigate with it. I'm not going to keep it out in the wind all the time. And more importantly, if I'm not navigating and I want to use the phone, I have a phone holder um, and I can just put that back here and it's completely protected and out of the wind by the, with the, uh, the nav. So let me take the tab, this thing off. Okay, that comes off, there's that. Again, it's just a ball mount. And then I have a 12 volt cigarette lighter power outlet. Um, I still use this for like my tire inflator and whatnot. And then I have a USB adapter for that. Um, also mounted on this thing to the back is a controller. I'll show you that in a second, but I have a second USB port, right? Waterproof. Uh, this one actually is on a cable that's wound up here. What I can do is unwind it, and when I have my tank bag on, I can put that in my tank bag, 
uh, and charge whatever I want in there. Let's see what else. I have a helmet light that I use sometimes. This is the wire that wires directly into the helmet light, directly into the bike, so I don't have to use it on a battery. Uh, and then again, on off switch for heated grips. Now, on the other side of this, now all of that stuff I just showed you, the cigarette lighter, the USB, the helmet light, the Tusk grips, are all controlled by a Row Electronics PDM60 power distribution module. Um, what that does is it's a circuit breaker built in. If it's programmable, I can program delays for time on. I can program delays for time off. Um, I can set the voltage at which it's going to pop the breaker. There's another there's air quotes breaker, right? And if it does that, you just turn the bike on and off and it resets. You can also see here, I'll turn the bike on. Now it's set on a seven second delay. So I just turned the bike on and you see, ah, there it goes. It just lit up. So these are the active um, outlets and then there's two in reserve. So when I finally do get an honest to God map book, right? When somebody invites me to a, a, a rally <laughs> and I get a map book, I still have two spots I can wire that into that. Um, again, if, if something pops, if, if a breaker goes, all you have to do is turn the bike off and back on and this will reset itself. Um, and that's all mounted to the back side of the tower. It holds all the electronics right there. So if something goes wrong to get at anything, it's these two screws and these two screws, this one and the one on the other side, those four screws come off. This whole thing pops off and I can get to any of the electronics or any of the wires that sit back here. So there. All right, I hope that answers anybody's questions they might have about my nav tower and the setup of it. Uh, again, this is all custom stuff, so y'all are going to have to go figure out how you want to mount your stuff to it. Uh, and the other cool thing is there's, there's still room in here. <laughs> all right, if there's anything I did not answer, you know, just hit me up in the comments. You know I will get back to you as quick as I can. That's the nav tower. With all those additions to the bike, with real off-road tires, not the, uh, the IRC stock tires that come with your bike. Uh, if you've ever weighed those things, I think they're missing some rubber on them. They're pretty light. So again, with real off-road tires, with three gallons of gas, and with everything else I've added to the bike, my bike weighs 315 pounds. The bike loaded up in adventure touring mode with the Moscow Moto Reckless 80 system and the hood tank bag. Um, with everything I need to go camping, adds another 50 pounds, give or take, to the bike. And I found that as long as I ride it as far forward as I can get it, the bike still rocks, rides really, really well on the stock springs. It is a little soft. I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's a little soft, and if you get into some really rough roads, you're gonna wish you had uh, dialed up your compression and your rebound rates. Um, but again, for the stock springs, it works fine for me. How much money do I have in this build? I have no idea. I never do the math, and I suggest the same for you. Never do the math. Um, honestly, it doesn't matter what bike I had, what car I'd have, I would always be modding it. That's just the way I am. Uh, besides, if I didn't buy something brand new for this bike every two weeks, you and I, we'd have nothing to talk about. So there is that. So to answer a few questions, everybody always asks me, um, number one, why didn't you buy a Honda Africa Twin? <laughs> Good question. Because the Twin won't go where this will go. Uh, as soon as Honda comes out with their 700, 750 version of the Twin, then I'll buy one. If anybody has any questions that I didn't answer, and there always are, just go ahead and throw them down in the comments below. You know, I always try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. As always, thank you guys so much for watching.